top of the morning to ya. It's Mr. Koga. And yeah, I know you might be asking yourself, does Mr. Koga really have a leprechaun outfit? Yes, I do. Was Mr. Koga sad that he couldn't wear it to school? Yes, he is. And will he still wear it in this video just so he can have a purpose to wear it once a year? Yes, he will. Um, so what we're gonna be doing today is three things, like the other video. Uh, number one, we're going to be doing a math activity with the St. Patrick's Day theme with gold coins. And you're gonna have to do an estimation of how many gold coins comes in this box of gold coins that Mr. Koga bought. Number two is going to be a fun art activity. And the art we're gonna to learn today is spiral art. So for that, you're gonna need a piece of paper and a few markers. If you wanna get some St. Patrick's Day colors for markers, that'd be great. Or crayons, colored pencils, pens, whatever you have. Whatever works. If you, if you just have a pencil, pencil's fine too. The design is still awesome. Okay, then the last thing we're gonna do is do a read aloud. And of course, since it's St. Patrick's Day, we're gonna read How to Catch a Leprechaun. All right, so we're gonna jump into the math activity right now. So let's try another transition. Mm -hmm. All right, here is our math task for today. Um, so I went online to Amazon and I bought a bunch of gold coins. They came in this box that we have here. Ignore that, St. Patrick's Day. So, St. Patrick's Day eggs, St. Patrick's Day bunny, St. Patrick's Day basket of eggs. Ignore that, anyway. So um, I bought this box of chocolates and I was wondering how many chocolates come in here. So what I'd like you to do now is we're gonna take five seconds. I want you to make an estimation of how many chocolate coins do you think can fit in this box? So you're gonna write a couple of numbers down. So right now I just want you to either remember it or write it down. Write down an estimation for what, how many chocolate coins you think would be in this box without any other information. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and we're back. All right, so I'll show you how many chocolate coins came inside of that box. And I put them in this handy dandy clear container so that we can see them all. Okay, so now that you can see all the gold coins, I want you to make another estimation. Is it gonna be the same amount as your first guess? Is it gonna be more than your first guess? Less than your first guess? Okay, so we're gonna take five seconds. I want you to write down a second number. It could be the same number if you want, but a second number for how many gold coins you think are inside of this box that I moved into this plastic container, okay? Okay, and we're back. Um, during those breaks, if you need to pause the video, just pause the video, okay? All right, so now that you have two numbers written down, you have the cold guess. You just looked at the box, very hard to get an estimation because you only see the coin and you see the box, so it's very hard to estimate. Then we saw a more visual example where we have gold coins spilling out of this container and you can actually see kind of how densely packed in there they are. Okay, the last one, I'm gonna give you a little bit more information. I want you to write down another number based on this information you're about to get. So, I don't know if you can see that super well. Uh, okay, so I'll just read it out loud and I'll put it on the screen. Um, there are about 15 servings in this container and a serving is six coins. Okay, I'll say that one more time. There are about 15 servings in this container one serving is about six coins. Okay, so why don't you pause the video now and go and use that information to make an even more educated guess on how many chocolate coins you think are in the video. Or uh, how many chocolate coins you think are in the container. Hello, what is that? All right, so we'll give five seconds for that. Pause the video and come back. Three, two, one, zero. All right, and we're back. Okay, so now that you have three different estimates, you have one that was just cold, you have one that you saw this, and one where you got actual numbers, you should have a pretty good estimation of how many gold coins are in there. All right, so now what we're gonna do is, I want you to discuss it with your family, discuss it with someone who's at your house, or just kind of think about it by yourself. If you, know, you just wanna think about it by yourself, that's totally fine. Um, but I want you to think about 
your estimates. What's reasonable, what's not reasonable. And then when we come back, we're gonna cut to the next scene and we're gonna actually count them, okay? All right, see ya in a little bit. All right, here is the big reveal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all these gold coins. I'm going to pour them out onto the table. Wow, quite the aesthetic there. Okay, so now I'm gonna start counting them and I'll do this pretty quick. Um, so I'm gonna start counting them by, maybe I'll make them stacks of five and then we'll count by fives to figure out how many are in the end. All right, here we go. go. came out to a perfectly even group full of uh, stacks of five, which is good. It makes it kind of easier. Okay, so this is sort of an array. If we cut these three out, that's an array on the top. It's a five by three array. So if we have f three rows of five or five rows of three, that would be 15. Then we have three more down here, 16, 17, 18. All right, so now let's go ahead and count them by fives. So you have to count with me, okay? Here we go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. Wow. Okay, so there are about 90 gold coins in that. Happy St. Patrick's Day box of chocolates. Wow, okay, pretty cool. So now go back and double check your estimates, kind of see which estimate was the closest, um, how necessary is it to have more and more information. It's kind of like, kind of like our three act maths where um, I give you a certain amount of information and some is unknown, but you just have to use your best guess and um, best reasoning to find the best answer. All right, so good job. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Hello friends, uh, this is Mr. Koga and welcome to Art Time. Uh, today we're going to be making a St. Paddy's Day inspired art piece and we're gonna be making spiral art. Uh, so for the first thing for spiral art, it's super easy, basically just making spirals, like mini circles that just go round and round and round, kind of like this little spiral of pens. Uh, the first thing we need to do is pick a color palette. So when you think of what colors do we, uh, what colors remind us of St. Patrick's Day? So green, obviously yellowish gold this light green looks pretty cool uh, let's see maybe even some black we could throw in there so this is called a color palette and when you choose a color palette for art it kind of just helps it be a little more cohesive that means it just helps it kind of match and just look a little better than it would if you chose random colors all right so uh we're gonna start using some colors here and the main point of spiral art is try not to let the colors touch each other like you don't want this green to be touching the green again so and you don't want yellow to touch yellow you don't want black to touch black basically like that all right so let's get started i'll show you how to draw the first few circles and then we'll kind of just let the drawing flow and evolve all right so what i like to do is i start in a corner and i just sort of make circles like this when I get to the edge of the paper, I let it kind of let an imaginary line flow out, and then wherever it comes back onto the paper, I catch it and I keep going. So flow out, catch it, flow out, catch it. And I'll just end it right there. Actually, maybe we'll just go all the way to the end. Okay, so there's our first line. Cap the pen, and we go. Yellow. So the yellow, I'm gonna draw close to this green one but I'm gonna make it look like the green one is stacked on top of this yellow. So when I hit the green, I stop drawing, kind of like I'm going off the page, I let it flow, then I can catch it and continue drawing. Okay, all right. So I'm just gonna let you watch the rest of the video and just kind of catch on as we go. So here we go.
a St. Patrick's Day, so of course we're going to read How to Catch a Leprechaun, words by Adam Wallace, pictures by Andy Elkerton. All right, let's jump into it. How to Catch a Leprechaun. The night is dark. The streets are quiet. St. Patrick's Day is near. I tap my hammer so you'll know the leprechaun is here. I'll pull out all your laces, put glitter in your hair, and when you walk around you'll see my gold coins everywhere. You'll never catch me in your trap, but yes I'll make a scene. I'll turn the whole place upside down. Your toilet will be green. Oh my god. Yeah, she painted the toilet green. Oh, but he left gold toilet paper. That's kind of nice. House number one. I'm going in. Really? That's your trap? I'm in and out without a doubt. That one was a snap. <laughs> and now I think it's getting worse. A shoebox on a stick? I'll dance a jig and still escape. We leprechauns are quick. Uh, yeah, better luck next time with that little hunting trap. Close this out real quick. Another house! I fixed your shoes. They really were quite smelly. I'll eat the nuts you left as bait and leave with a full belly. Now you're talking. Look at this. It's dandelion tea. But I'm too speedy for your trap. This tea is mine for free. I know you want my pot of gold, that iron cage was clever, but I've been alive 200 years. You won't catch me ever. Ha 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 now you're getting fancy, but I'll escape with twinkle toes. It's a fancy pansy dancy. Well, this girl's kind of smart. She made a little catapult shooting her Unicorn dolls. She has too many of those unicorn dolls, by the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten unicorn dolls. It's a little excessive. It seems to me an engineer has helped with this design. Too bad this little leprechaun is going to be just fine. Wow. It's like a very complex Rube Goldberg machine. Your entire house is one big trap, from ceiling to the floor. Nice try indeed, but soon enough I'll stroll right out the door. And the sign says, totally safe place for leprechauns. Of course it is. The leprechaun be gone 3000 gave me quite a scare. But without a four-leaf clover, I won't be caught in there. You'll never catch this leprechaun. Impossible, that's a fact. Unless one day a brilliant child designs the perfect trap. But who will that child be? Better luck next year. Wait, I skipped the page. No, I guess I didn't. Oh, well, that's how that book ends. Not the best rhyme in the world, but we'll take it. Um, it's a cool little engineering book. Kind of like how they focus on, like, you know, building and designing, getting better and better and better. Oh, it's good. All right, How to Catch a Leprechaun. If you want to check it out on Epic, How to Catch a Mermaid, How to Catch a Turkey, it's all there. Um, if your parents haven't sent me their email or checked their email, tell them check it because you can get a free subscription to Epic until June, the end of this school year. All right, we'll catch you on the flip side. Mr. Kogas, out.